a refugee of soil desertification. More than 20 civilizations in all regions of the world have failed because of agriculture damaging the environment. Their communities could not handle the deteriorating environment and the rising population. Globally, that's what we're doing today. Poor land leads to poor people. Poor people leads to social breakdown. Poor land leads to increasing frequency of floods and droughts, mass emigration across borders and into cities, and it's leading to ideal recruitment conditions. What we know right now is the way we're feeding ourselves is undermining the very ecology that we're dependent upon. So the long-term prognosis for our survival on this planet, given business as usual, is very, very poor. According to the United Nations, the world's remaining topsoil will be gone within 60 years. In other words, unless we find a way to save our soils, we have 60 harvests left. The global scale of the problems we face may seem insurmountable, but in every fight that seems unwinnable, there are those who refuse to give up. This is a supercomputer model by NASA. We're concerned of the red and purples being CO2. I want you to notice the dates. That is February, March. Now, what are we doing March, April? What do we do in modern agriculture in April? We are tilling. We're tilling the land. And look at the huge plumes of CO2. Look at the days. May. Now, let's see what happens around June. Look at the colors change. Ladies and gentlemen, what is happening in June? <laughs> you see how powerful the living plants are? Can you imagine if we had all our rangeland and all our cropland covered? The covered planet is a healthy planet. We can fix a lot of our climate issues to be bringing the CO2 down into a living plant and put it back into the soil where it belongs. Agriculture is the biggest way that humans impact our landscape. We have unleashed through agriculture over the centuries, over the millennia, carbon from the land, and it's now up in the atmosphere. It's now part of that legacy load of carbon dioxide. Many people are coming to this discussion about soil health because it can bring that carbon back down and put it in the ground. The first 
piece of environmentalist and the editor of Draw Down, the most comprehensive plan ever proposed to reverse global warming. Please welcome Paul Hawkins. Tell us why your plan is different and why it is the most comprehensive. Well, it's very different because it's the first one ever. Wow. And you cannot achieve drawdown without biosequestration. Biosequestration is using plants, trees, perennials, and techniques of grazing and farming to capture carbon and store it in the sink of the soil and retain it for decades, if not centuries. What we did is map, measured, and modeled the 100 most substantive solutions for global warming. And what I mean by solutions, I mean things that are at hand. We know how to do it. They're scaling. And if we continue to scale in a rigorous but reasonable way over 30 years, we can reverse global warming. When you talk to people about this great technology that has existed for millions of years that takes carbon out of the atmosphere and stores it safely in the soil and that it's called plants working with soil microorganisms, it seems too simple. Putting our atmospheric carbon down into our soil may be a simple idea, but to do it on a global scale requires politics. And when it comes to the politics of climate change, well, let's just say there's a lot of hot air.